Hey guys, thank you guys for tuning in to the Paper Review Wrestling Podcast. I'm your host, uh, Mark Flores. Uh, tonight is August 31st, uh, 2016, and I'm here to do a Raw and SmackDown analysis. Um, as you guys know, last uh, last Monday on uh, on Raw, Kevin Owens actually won the Fatal 4-Way the fatal four way elimination match with Big Cass, Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins. Um he won it under uh very odd circumstances, but I'll be able to go into detail with that as we go on with the uh with the podcast tonight. But anyway, let me get the commercials out of the way. Tonight's pay per view wrestling podcast is brought to you by none other than my proud sponsors, Game Swappers. Game Swappers, buy, sell and trade your retro games and next gen consoles. That's PS4 and Xbox One. You can come into contact with Gabe Swappers via Instagram at G-A-M-E-S-W-A-P-P-E-R-S. That's G-A-M-E-S-W-A-P-P-E-R-S. Game Swappers. Buy, sell, and trade. So, the first thing we need to get out of the way, ladies and gentlemen, is this um, topic that I wanted to get taken care of right now. Um, the question that I have for you guys today is, is Kevin Owens a really a main event star? Kevin Owens is now the new WWE Universal Champion. And now, what a time it is to be a fan of WWE. It is very amazing to see that. It is very amazing to see how how Kevin Owens won it, what storylines can be built on it, but more importantly, the man that people had faith in for so long who, uh, who believed in Kevin Owens actually get to see this man become the WWE Universal Champion. Um... I'm excited to see what they have planned for him. Uh, by WWE doing this, they're 100% invested into Kevin bringing acclaim and credibility, a credibility to that title. You guys need to understand that after SummerSlam, Finn Balor needed to vacate the title. So WWE Creative needed to call an audible. So they're all in their they're all in the creative desks, you know, trying to make a, a second alternative option for the new WWE Universal Champion. So they're saying to themselves, well, we need someone that has as much prestige as Finn Balor, who's uh, a face of the new era. Who can it be? Do we put the title back on Seth Rollins? Well, that could be tried and true, but do we really want to do that? So someone in there decided, hey, maybe we should put Kevin Owens in the main event stage, maybe we should slap the title on him. So Monday night came around and boom, it happened. I was pretty shocked when I saw that Kevin Owens was in between the first uh, was in between the three uh, with Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins, and then Triple H comes out of nowhere. Triple H uh, assaults Roman Reigns, throws him back in the ring, and it looks like it's just a, uh, another authority angle being fixed up. But then something weird happens. Triple H picks up Seth Rollins, and then he looks like he's going to pedigree Kevin Owens, but then he immediately turns around and pedigrees Seth Rollins. As soon as this happened, the room uh, in that um, the arena there becomes electric. Everyone's on their feet. They're like, "Whoa, what's going on? Why is why does Triple H why has Triple H turned uh, heel?" pretty much twice in one night uh, by by pinning, uh, by assaulting Roman Reigns, but then assaulting Seth Rollins. Uh, people are asking those many questions. So all this uh, jubilation, all this electricity and magnetism towards this match is now being being centralized within the, the confines of the squared circle. Now you ask yourself, wow, Kevin Owens is actually going to win this. Kevin Owens pins Seth Rollins after Triple H's pedigree, and the ref hits one, two, then three. It was amazing to see. It was amazing to see Kevin Owens actually win the title. Um, I was very, uh, I was very moved by what WWE did. Um, but this is what fans need to focus on now. This is a guy who doesn't fit the typical image of Vince McMahon's heavyweight championship uh, image. Uh, he just won the most important title in the uh, on the raw brand the wwe universal title needs to have this type of prestige going off of the bat it's a fresh title that they made 
for the sake of a new uh, for the sake of the raw brand so they need to make sure that they're doing something right with it so i just hope for the best in this situation with uh with kevin owens winning this title um but let me go further into the point that i was making Despite not having an ideal physique, Kevin Owens makes up for it in a moveset that only a few wrestlers in the WWE can can rival. Kevin Owens' moveset is very dense. It uh, goes up there with Cesaro and Apollo Crews and AJ Styles' moveset. Um, so this is kind of a good turn for the WWE. This is allowing barriers to be broken. Um not saying that overweight champions have haven't been crowned. I mean, you have Yokozuna in 1993, but I'm talking about currently in the new era. Um, I appreciate WWE doing this. I can finally wholeheartedly say that any WWE superstar can become a champ if they're in the right place and at the right time. Uh, anyone, I'm talking race, color, creed, whatever, any type, fat, skinny, small, they can officially do it now. Now I fully believe that because, um, as many of you may know, I've only been, I only got back into wrestling in early 2014, and I kind of tuned out. I kind of tuned out from 2010 for the four-year gap. For that four years, uh, I was uh, not watching wrestling. I missed out on a lot of things, so I had to play catch up. But now I was able to see that Daniel Bryan, CM Punk, Alberto Del Rio, a lot of these non-ideal champions actually became champions. So it was good to see. Um, but anyway, let me get back to what I was saying here about Kevin Owens. Um, one down, one downside to bring about the reason, uh, one downside to bring about that Kevin Owens is champion is that uh, that the title isn't in the hands of Finn Balor. Um, to me, I, Finn Balor was this, you know, bubblegum kid, you know, he was this guy who was fresh on the scene, who had this, who had this amazing run going to WrestleMania, beating Seth Rollins clean, and now he had to vacate the title the next day. That to me isn't cool, I don't really like that, but you know, that's what happens, that's, uh, that's the unfortunate part of this business is that you could, you know, you can get injured uh, doing the best match of your career, and then you have to vacate a title that you won that same night. So that's something that you have to note and realize that those are the breaks of the business sometimes. But the match itself went well, and I think that the turn Triple H did near the end of the match uh, was well done. The reaction of both Mick Foley and Stephanie McMahon were very genuine, and I definitely appreciated that. Um... To me, Kevin Owens is cemented not as a main eventer. Um, his trio of matches he had with John Cena were amazing. And John has put Kevin Owens over early. Um, I say after. After he beat John Cena at at, um, at Battleground, I really do think that he... Oh no, excuse me, Elimination Chamber, the, the match he won. Um, but I, I really think that he was already at the top at that point. Once you get a, put over by John Cena, I already know that you're top tier. And I, I already knew based on what I saw with Kevin Owens in NXT um, and some of his uh, early work in Ring of Honor, I knew this guy was real deal. Um, the It's good to see Kevin Owens hoisting up the most coveted title on the Raw brand. It is, it's something good to see, and I hope that they do something right with what they're, uh, what they have planned for the months ahead. The sky is the limit with, uh, Kevin Owens, and I hope that, I hope the best for his title reign, to be honest. I hope they put him in good angles and good, uh, setups for, for some good matches here, but other than that, let me go back right into my review of, uh, of SmackDown. That was the main point I wanted to bring about Monday Night Raw. That's pretty much that Kevin Owens winning the Universal Championship is something that we didn't expect, we didn't see coming, and that's what needed to be brought out more than anything on Raw that night. I know Cesaro um, could have been brought up or, you know, what ha the other matches, but that was the main thing to take away from Monday Night Raw. That's not that's not trying to that's not me trying to devalue Monday Night Raw, but that is simply me 
bringing up the main point for Monday Night Raw. Let's go on with my SmackDown review that I saw uh, yesterday. Uh, the Miz is cutting some damn good promos. They started with the replay of his uh, Day 141 promo. Um, he's getting people interested in everything that he's doing and everything that he's saying. To me, that's magnetism. That's people wanting to see him wrestle. And that's putting butts into the seats. I expect a little something going in between him and Daniel Bryan. So let's hope for something uh, a little entertaining along the near future. Um, but after that, we went to the tag team tournaments. We had the Vaude Villains versus the Hype Brothers. And one good thing to take away from this match was that Mojo Rawley looked very impressive. And I see that this guy was definitely being elevated by the announced team. A lot of them were singing high praises about his energy and about his passion. Um, so this does a lot for the Hype Brothers. I saw that they were pretty over with the fans. Um, none of their, none of the stuff was piped in. So not none of their uh, anna- um, applause. But not only does this help Mojo Rawley and his tag team acclaim, but this also helps Zack Ryder, who's kind of in the same position where he's this lovable guy. He's this guy that you just can't. Um, dislike. He's really entertaining and he's a really nice guy. So that though, that's why those two go hand in hand. Something to appreciate. Immediately after this, we had uh, AJ Styles cutting a promo backstage and uh, getting into the face of Apollo Crews. So then, then came a match immediately after uh, while AJ Styles was cutting a promo and it came uh, to be that Apollo Crews was going to fight AJ Styles. Uh, this was a great match to me. Uh, I hope that Apollo Crews actually gets his time in the sun. Um, but I think it's going to take time for him. He needs to cut a little bit more promos. He needs to be a little more charismatic, but he'll have his time in the sun. I'm honestly going to, it's honestly going to take time and it's still, he's still relatively young. So he has a lot to learn. Um, I think it's only a matter of time before he becomes the first, uh, all black WWE African-American cha- I mean, the first WWE African-American champion, you know, like we're, you could argue that the rock was the first, but he was, um, we're not, we're talking a hundred percent African-American, uh, not half Samoan, half black, but anyway, that's neither here nor there. I think that they'll be able to use that as a ploy to elevate the, to elevate his name because he was the first to do it. Um, after that, AJ Styles ended up going over on Apollo Crews. Um, AJ Styles just needs a quick W, and Apollo Crews was just the one to put to be the one to put his back on the mat for him. Uh, this is just to elevate his his run towards a towards a cl- clash of champions going on in a couple weeks. Oh no, actually, excuse me, sorry, backlash. That was the backlash match that they're going to have to uh, face each other. Um, after that, immediately. The Heath Slater trailer park tr- promo was very entertaining. It was funny to me. I thought it was very entertaining. Uh, having Renee Young go to this West Virginia, West Virginia trailer park to meet uh, to meet Heath Slater's wife, and have Rhino just randomly there. Um, it was just funny to see all that. And um, uh, this actually played into the tag match that they had earlier uh, later in the day. But um, that was a. Uh, a segue into the women's tag match was which was uh, Natalia and Alexa Bliss versus Naomi and Becky Lynch. Um, if I had my choice personally, I would put the WWE uh, women's actually the SmackDown women's champion uh, on someone with a better move set than Nikki Bella. I think that Nikki Bella is uh, more of like a more of like a like a, a beautiful looking diva first than a wrestler. Um, I would have someone, you know, just someone a little bit more talented on the wrestling side other than Nikki Bella, but the way it's going, it's looking like Nikki Bella is going to have the title. Um, the only reason I mention this is, is because Nikki Bella was a part of the, uh, SmackDown announced team during this segment. And, um, uh, Alexa Bliss ended up, uh, pinning, uh, Becky Lynch through heel like means of holding the shorts, but, um, from the match that I saw, I thought it was very impressive. I thought it was good. Um, they've come a long way from the matches that we used to see a couple of years ago. So it's actually good to see. You know, all you have to do is revamp the talent and uh, s- separate a few here and there, and now you actually have a great dense women's division on both sides of the uh, on both sides of the brand, whether it's SmackDown or Raw. So that's something good to see. 
Um, other than that, from what we had otherwise, we had the Headbangers and Rhino versus Heath. Uh, the Headbangers versus Rhino and Heath Slater. Um, it was good to see the Headbangers back in action after 16 years um, from being away from the WWE ring. Um, I'm just glad that they were doing their the veteran job and actually put their uh, backs on the mat for uh, Rhino and Heath Slater. I think both of those guys need a, a long run as long as they can because Heath Slater's cutting good promos, whether he's on Raw, te teasing uh, teasing his free agency, whether on Raw or SmackDown. So it's kind of good to see. It's kind of good to see that. Um I just hope that they go deeper in the tournament than most of the guys. I hope it's just, uh, to me, I hope it's it's um, American Alpha and Heath Slater and Rhino in the in the uh, finals. I, that's the only thing I can hope for. But um, once again, it was good to see the headbangers, but I just didn't appreciate that the SmackDown crowd didn't know much more about them. None of them really cheered, but then again, you look at the demographic of what the WWE has now a lot of people don't really remember that many Attitude Era stars, but that's neither here nor there. Um, the next match that they had was a pretty odd stacked, uh, I mean, an odd booking for this match. They had Dean Ambrose versus Baron Corbin. Um, this match was okay. I thought it was. Uh, I don't think either of those two. I don't think Dean Ambrose is a very solid wrestler in my opinion. But he's over with the fans, and that's what matters. Um, Baron Corbin. I've never been a big fan of the guy, so it was kind of good to see. It was kind of good to see uh, both of them in the ring while AJ Styles was announcing because AJ Styles is a very underrated announcer. He's very humorous, especially with uh, David. With especially when he's back. Uh, um, giving back sass to uh, David Atunga. Um I, I already knew what was going to happen. I already knew uh, no one was going to win this match since AJ Styles was going to be on the announce table, uh, the announce uh, circle with the other guys. So I already knew that AJ Styles was going to come out and cause a disqualification for either guy. So um, I'm just glad that they were able to just get out there and put a little bit of work in before they had to uh, get interrupted by AJ Styles. Um, I'm very excited for Backlash. I'm very um i'm patiently waiting to see what happens i want to see what happens on the all smackdown branded pay-per-view i want to see what happens with that um i really hope it goes well because i i i do appreciate this smackdown roster a lot because it's one of these one of these things where like i mentioned a couple podcasts earlier uh, earlier this uh Early a couple uh, weeks ago, is that I have a few superstars that I like on Raw, but I have a lot of superstars that I like on SmackDown. So the appeal to watch two separate pay per views on for two separate brands is very appealing, and then you also have another pay per view for um, both brands at the end of the month. I think it's like every other month. Oh, actually, matter of fact, it's only going to be four. It's going to be SummerSlam, uh, WrestleMania, Survivor Series, and then the Royal Rumble. Those are going to be those four mainstays, I believe. I have to go back to check that, but they're, they're only going to have a couple of those uh, co-branded uh, pay-per-views. But other than that, I've seen a lot of good come out of these SmackDown episodes. Um, I know there's been a couple bad ones, uh, like the one a couple weeks ago, but from what I'm seeing, I'm seeing two different identities from two different shows, and it's something to walk away and appreciate because you could tell WWE is attempting to to separate these two these two uh, brands completely. Besides them interrupting here and there to incite promotion for cross brand branded booking, but other than that, these two two uh, brands are totally separate from each other, and you could totally have you could totally identify with the look and feel of them separately, and it's good to see. Well, that's been my review for uh, Raw and SmackDown this week. Um, but before we go, I want to let you guys know is that this pay-per-view wrestling podcast has been brought to you by Game Swappers. Game Swappers, buy, sell, and trade your retro games and next-gen consoles. That's PS4 and Xbox One. You can come into contact with Game Swappers via Instagram at G-A-M-E-S-W-A-P-P-E-R-S. That's G-A-M-E-S-W-A-P-P-E-R-S. Game Swappers, buy, sell, and trade. 
Keep in mind, guys, that if you do share the pay-per-view wrestling podcast or any one of my podcasts, which include Retro, Retro Collecting 101 or the very entertaining Mark and Andre show, the only film, entertainment, and conspiracy theory sh- uh, podcast show on Spreaker.com, you'll be able to get 10% off towards your uh, towards your purchase at Game Swappers, or you'll be able to get 10% more towards your retro game trade and simply share it, take a screenshot, and show the person uh, that's... Uh, working game swappers either through their instagram or through uh in person at their store in claremont california uh montclair california excuse me other than that you guys have a good night it's been good reviewing uh the smackdown and raw brand this week i'll see you guys next week when i have a backlash review and a class of champions review other than that you guys have a good night thank you <laughs>